CC force motion blur is found under the time category, and this effect is going to attempt to create natural looking motion blur. And this is really useful for effects that don't support it. But before I get to an effect that actually doesn't support motion blur, I'm gonna show you how After Effects native motion blur works with motion. So I've just animated my logo going across the screen and back again, and motion blur is not enabled. But if I turn that switch on and make sure that my motion blur is enabled here as well, now I have motion blur showing up on top of my logo. It's very smooth and natural. And if I were to add in some more keyframes on say the Y position, so it's not moving on just the X axis, it's going to generate motion blur in the direction that my logo is moving. So I'll just easy ease all of these properties and now I have something that moves in a few more directions. And you can see that that motion blur is angling towards the velocity of the motion. But if I get these keyframes out of the way, and I add an effect like CC Pixel Poly, which will shatter my layer, make it explode. Even though I have motion blur enabled for the layer and for the comp, there is no motion blur showing up on top of this effect. And that's because this effect just doesn't support it. That's where force motion blur comes into play. But I don't wanna put that right on top of this layer because I want it to account for everything in the scene and anything else that I do to this layer. And the easiest way to be safe about that is either pre-compose this layer so all the effects are contained within a pre-comp and then apply this force motion blur to the pre-comp or just simply add it to an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go up to layer, new adjustment layer because I think that's a lot simpler. I'll call this motion blur and then apply CC force motion blur to it. Right away, motion blur is going to show up on top of all of these pieces that are exploding out of my layer. And it's pretty natural looking. Let me just center this up and turn the scale back up to 100 so we can see this in greater detail. And I'll get rid of my keyframes here. And you can see that as this explosion is happening outwards from the center, those shards are producing motion blur. And it looks really nice even at its default settings. It does take a little bit to render, but so does the native motion blur. So that's no surprise. Let's take a look at the controls that we have for this force motion blur and see how we can customize it. The first property is motion blur samples. And I'm gonna zoom in really close on one of these shards and just turn this all the way down. So at a motion blur sample of one, we're not actually generating any motion blur. It's sampling one frame of motion. So there's nothing for it to interpolate and to blur. As soon as I increase that to two, we're going to see two copies of every shard that are partially transparent and the overlapping areas will be 100% opaque. The more samples I add, the smoother this motion blur is going to become until you can't really see those samples anymore. The faster your motion, the more motion blur samples you're going to need to fill in the gaps in those intermediate frames. So if I increased my force to be really extreme and found a shard maybe a few frames back, these shards are moving at a much faster rate now and you can again see those samples. So I'd probably want to increase the samples until that's smoother doesn't have to be so smooth that you can't tell those samples are there. But if when you play this back, you can see those individual samples, then you're going to want to crank that number higher. But as you can see, that really does slow down the render. So typically I'll work with much fewer samples, maybe six or even four. And then once I'm ready to export, I'll increase that to a much higher number that actually blends together very smoothly, like 16 or even 32 samples, depending on how fast everything is in my scene is moving so that I have very nice smooth motion blur. The next option is override shutter angle. And this is talking about the shutter angle settings for your composition. If you go into composition, composition settings, and then into advanced, the motion blur shutter angle setting is right here. Now, if you're not familiar, shutter angle is a way to measure how much light is being let in to every frame when recording video. And it's also an indicator of how much motion blur you're going to produce when you're filming something. 180 degrees is a very natural looking motion blur, but if I turn that down to 90 degrees, my motion blur is going to be half as noticeable. If I click OK, nothing actually changed because override shutter angle is checked, meaning it's ignoring that setting that I just changed and instead giving me a shutter angle control right in the effect. But if I uncheck this, my motion blur is actually completely removed because the next property of native motion blur is set to off. If I turn that to on, and make sure to enable motion blur on my adjustment layer. Now it is going to be taking that shutter angle from my composition settings. So if I go back into my composition settings and I change 90 down to say 45, it'll be half as much again. And you saw that update, I have much less motion blur. 
or if I turn it back up to the default of 180, we'll have more. All right, now let's say that I didn't wanna use the composition settings. I'm not actually using the native motion blur, so I'm just gonna disable that for my entire comp, and I'm gonna turn that native motion blur back to off and check that override shutter angle once more. Now I could change the shutter angle right here, turning that down to 90 or even 45 to get less motion blur on all of those particles. This effect is extremely useful. It's very versatile, and I've used it a lot in my After Effects career. But that's everything you need to know about CC Force Motion Blur. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.